So you guys seem to like the video that I did after the Tennessee game last week, and I got a few requests to do one after the Tulsa game from this week. So I guess let's go ahead and get into it. And the first thing I want to say is this should have been a much larger margin of victory than it actually was. Um, another thing is I am 100% sold on Baker Mayfield now. Last week he did play really well, but he also started off kind of bad. So I was kind of worried about how he would play later into the season. But today, let me just go ahead and read his stats off. 32 completions on 38 attempts, 487 yards, 4 touchdowns, and he had 13 carries for 85 yards and 2 touchdowns. I like having a quarterback back there that can make plays. And Trevor tried that last season, but it always didn't work out. So... Yeah, that's just something I wanted to say on Baker Mayfield. He looked very good through pretty much most of the game. He was solid through a lot of it. I wasn't too worried about our offense most of the time. And second quarter, it kind of got a little bit iffy because of the two fumbles from Mixon and Pirine. And did they ever say actually what Pirine's injury was? Because he looked hurt going back to the sideline. He came back in the third quarter. But yeah, he had a fumble inside the red zone. I think Mixon's fumble was also inside the red zone, and that just killed two really big drives, and Tulsa was able to capitalize on that. The defense looked very strong to start out. They were holding them back pretty well until the P. Ryan fumble in the second quarter, and then Tulsa's offense drove right downfield on our secondary, and it did not look good. Um, we were missing our number two corner. I think his name is Jordan Thomas. So that forced us to put a true freshman. I think he's a true freshman. PJ and Bassinor out there and um, he was kind of frustrating me all day because um, I don't know how many of you guys are actually Philadelphia Eagles fans I, I figure since most of you are Sooner fans you're most likely a Dallas Cowboys fan or something else in this general area but last season we had a corner actually two of them that would never turn their head and they got burned so much and PJ and, and Bassinor am I saying that right I think I'm saying that right if not you guys know who I'm talking about um he wouldn't turn his head all day, and I got to the point where I was yelling at my TV, like, just turn your freaking head around and look for the ball, but I guess you can't get too mad at him because he is a true freshman. It was his first start, so, I mean, I'm not going to get too upset with him. He just needs to learn to turn his head and look for the ball because I think it was one of the pass interference calls that he got. It might have been the only pass interference call where he didn't turn around and ran into the defender. If he turns his head, he has an actual case that it was incidental contact and that he didn't mean to knock him over. I don't think he meant to knock him over anyway, but because he wasn't looking back for the ball, they called it. But it wasn't just the true freshman corner getting burned all day. Let me read Dane Evans, the Tulsa quarterback stats. Um, 34-51, 427 yards, and four touchdowns. This is the second week in a row where our secondary has not looked that great, and it's beginning to worry me. That was a, that was a worry before we went into last season, and it's starting to worry me now. I thought maybe we had fixed some stuff, and it does look better than last season, but even Zach Sanchez was getting beat all day. And just to kind of compare these two players, uh, Kiaris Garrett, uh, the number one receiver for Tulsa, he's six foot four, 207 pounds. We will play, I think, one other receiver like that this season that is a team's number one receiver, and that's TCU's Josh Doxson. And Kiaris Garrett had 14 catches for 189 yards and the Hail Mary touchdown. I think he was going to caught the Hail Mary at the end of the half. Um, we can't let Doxon do that. That, I mean, we can't let a team like Tulsa do that, who I'm assuming their quarterback is nowhere near the level of Trevon Boykin. And I probably sound like a TCU fanboy. It's just, um, even as a Sooners fan, I know TCU is the biggest threat in the Big 12 this season. If you don't realize that, maybe there's a case for Baylor, but TCU is obviously a big threat for the Big 12 this season, and we have to play better if we're going to beat them. But one thing that got me really excited near the end of the game, actually, was Samaj P. Ryan running in for that touchdown. I hadn't really been keeping up with his stats throughout the entire game, but his final stats were 22 carries, 152 yards, and a touchdown. So one thing I like to kind of compare this offense to is the Chip Kelly offense that the Philadelphia Eagles run. And um, I know some of you probably don't want to hear this since, I, like I said, I'm assuming most of you are Cowboys fans. But the way it seemed like we worked is with the air raid offense, we were obviously doing the short passes and then we got into the long passes and it was wearing the defense out. And I think that's why P. Ryan was kind of able to explode near the end of the game. And I'm hoping we can do that 
against better opponents. Obviously, we don't have a game next week, but I think our next game is West Virginia in Norman, so that should be pretty interesting. But I'm finally happy that P. Ryan started getting going. He finally had a 100-yard game. Granted, it was against Tulsa. But that is pretty much all the thoughts I have on this game. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments, our offense, our defense, everything. i love to see your guys' opinion on all this sort of stuff. Even the people who like to chew me out in the comments. Um, you know what? It's interaction, so I don't care. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys at least in this series in two weeks.